Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 28 of the Horizon series. Now, in a previous episode, we saw a test of a prototype pressure chamber for the booster and that ended up having a couple of leaks before we ended up getting to the target pressure. Now, to find out why it leaked, we cut up the pressure chamber into segments uh, and inspected it. It mostly looked okay, uh, but one of the things that we noticed was cracking in the fiberglass in the layer that seals it. Now, if that was cracked, then it's quite obvious that air could have made its way through to the outside. So a uh, couple of other things. Uh, we thought that maybe possibly air could have gotten out through the tape over here. And it's also possible that the joint between the end cap and the body tube uh, also maybe wasn't quite sealed. Um, it looks like we didn't quite use enough glue in some sections, but uh, I think that was mostly okay. And lastly, uh, there was also a leak around the brass nozzle insert. Uh, so what we suspect that the carbon fiber had expanded around it under pressure. Now, having a better idea of what the probable causes of those leaks were, we decided to build another test pressure chamber. Uh, and this one's got probably half a dozen uh, improvements in the design. Uh, to try and eliminate those leaks. Now, because the construction techniques are very similar to what we saw previously, uh, we're just going to show you a short montage of this getting put together, and then we'll st jump straight into the tests. We start off the test again by filling the pressure chamber full of water. And then we fit the nozzle hose adapter. The pressure chamber then gets mounted inside the test frame and the high pressure hose gets connected. We've set up a couple of cameras again either side of the pressure chamber to try and cover as much of the chamber as possible. We've got our new GoPro on one side and our regular camera on the other side. And we're hidden again behind a stone wall. So let's start the test. We're manually controlling the fill so that we can do fine adjustments as needed. Three or four hundred. I'll stop. Here we're pausing at 400 psi just to do a quick check for leaks. 400. I'm going to have a quick look. Seems to be holding. No noise. 600, 8, Nine. 900, and 1,000 and stop. Here we've reached 1,000 PSI. So we're still holding 1,000? Yeah. Although there are a few creaks from the pressure chamber, it's still holding. Much better test. The pressure had dropped slightly, and this may be caused by the pressure chamber having slightly stretched or the compressed air had cooled a little. I kept wanting to depressurize sooner, but dad kept insisting we hold it for longer. Okay, should we abort now? No! <laughs> hold it! But we wouldn't hold it this long, would we? On the launch pad? You never know. But A to, to be sure. Okay. Okay, air closed. Yeah. 
We held it at that pressure for three minutes and 15 seconds before depressurizing. So that was a successful test and we thought that we had fixed all the issues with the previous iteration of the pressure chamber. We're refilling for test number two. We decided to run the test a second time because we wanted to see what pressure cycling will do to the pressure chamber. Okay, test number two. As I said, maybe stop at 500. Three, four, six hundred. And stop at seven, 800, stop at 800. Seven. Eight. And just hold it. If this was our first launch pressure, again, it's making noise. We again brought it up to a thousand psi, and this is what happened after 15 seconds. 900, 950, 1000. Yeah, 1000. It's holding. This time it was the top end cap that sprung a small leak. Still holding a thousand. Oh, sprang a leak at the top. Uh, abort, abort. Dad was right. It's important to see how the pressure chamber behaves over time and under pressure. This was a bit disappointing, but also really important to find out. We wouldn't want this to happen on a second flight of the booster. So overall, these tests were much better than the previous ones. We managed to get to our target pressure and even hold it there twice, uh, though it did fail eventually. Now, I think we're pretty close to having a final working design, but let's open up this pressure chamber and see what we can learn. So here's the inside of the top end cap. From a first look, it all looks nice and clean and smooth. There are no obvious cracks in the walls like we saw in the previous one. The join between the end cap and the body tube looks nice and smooth and a lot better than the previous one as well. It's hard to believe that this much water flow came through the end cap without any obvious path for the water to escape. If we have a look at the damage on the outside, we can see that this area here has signs of water ingress all the way up to this point. This goes all the way up to the end of the body tube. If we then flip it over, we can see that it's in direct line with the tape. Perhaps the air is leaking along the tape after all and entering between the two carbon fiber layers. This would explain why no obvious path exists from the inside. If we compare the damage from the previous pressure chamber, we can see that where the water came out was also right near the tape. I think this must be the culprit. In the previous test, we saw that the inner part of the tube along the length of the tape was slightly swollen, meaning that pressurized water found its way into the tape. This tape is under one layer of fiberglass and two coats of epoxy, but it probably only takes one tiny pinhole for pressure to leak into that space. We considered this as one of the potential failure modes, and so for this new pressure chamber, we actually scraped away the tape from the last 15 millimeters of the tube so that air couldn't make its way out. Upon really close inspection, we can see that there may have been a small crack in the epoxy, and again, it leads directly to the tape. Here's the nozzle end. It also looks very good and clean with no cracks or damage. Here is the previous one for comparison. You can also see the edge joint is a lot better. The tape was also scraped away from the end of this one and we don't see any sign of leakage. Perhaps the pressure never made it into the tape at this end of the tube. We cut the end cap again and this time through the tape itself. And we can see that although I scraped away the visible part of the tape, I didn't remove that part of the tape that was underneath the carbon fiber that the tape was holding down. This means that there was still a direct path to the outside along the tape. So overall, we're quite happy with the construction and how the internal surface and joints turned out. And we'll just need to make sure that the tape doesn't go under any part of that overlap.
The cracking noises we heard may have been the air separating the last 15 millimeters of the overlap where there was no tape. So we're going to build another test pressure chamber because we want to be 100% confident that these work before we start building the full size ones, which are a lot more work and are also more expensive. So a couple of good things that came out of these tests is the cylindrical part of the pressure chamber hasn't failed yet and hasn't had any leaks. And also the leak around the nozzle uh, seems to be fixed now. So the improvements we made there seems to be working. Now we're also thinking of doing some live streams from the workshop. So if that's something you're perhaps interested in, please let us know in the comments, or perhaps you prefer the edited down videos. So please let us know. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So here's a bit of an update. You may remember the last Nova flight from a few months ago that didn't quite go as well as we wanted. <laughs> this was Nova's highest pressure at 450 psi or 31 bar, so it would have been nice to find out what the actual altitude was. There's the altimeter. Did that survive? No, altimeter's dead. Dude, we killed it. The LCD screen was completely cracked and had broken away from the PCB, so there was no way for us to read the altitude. A big shout out to John from Jolly Logic for sending us a replacement LCD panel for this old unit. I was able to solder in the new LCD panel and I also replaced the battery that had a few dings. Here's the unit powered up. After replacing the LCD screen, we get an altitude for Nova of 1445 feet. So we were happy to find out what the real altitude was, as the estimate for that flight was 1350 feet.